Hey guys, I'm going to do another off the cuff video. I apologize for my voice. I have a cold. Not COVID this time, I checked. I'm going to be responding to the tweets by congressional candidate Alexandra M. Hunt. When I first saw these, I thought this was utterly dystopic. And now, a day or two later, I see she's gotten a lot of backlash. Thank Christ. For those of you that don't know what she said, let me read it out to you and respond as I go through it. So this American congressional candidate tweeted, Young men aren't having sex. Nearly a third of men under 30 have not had sex. And a higher percent do not have as much sex as they'd like. Not exactly surprising, but this kind of statistic is a sign of much deeper problems. And then there's a graph from the Washington Post showing 28% of men between ages 18 and 30 reported no sex in the past year. So her tweet's a little bit misleading because it sounds like she's talking about lifetime. And then the stats say 18% for women. Okay, so the number of women not having sex is lower. And the assumption is, right, now these women don't suffer from depression, right? Because they're like all happily partnered and having lots of orgasms, which is obviously nonsense. You have to ask people, not just in terms of quantity, but quality. So women are having more sex, but is that sex satisfying? Is it actually fun? Is maybe some of it violent and traumatizing? Because that's what we hear from a lot of women. So what much deeper problems do you think she's going to talk about? What could be the cause of this? The global pandemic of COVID or of porn culture? What's the problem here? She says, Our society criminalizes sex and sweeps it under the rug. The consequences are straightforward. There is more violence. Since platforms like Craigslist were banned from advertising sex, serious violent crimes against all women, not just sex workers, have increased by nearly one-fifth. So her claim is this debt is not due to a pandemic, not because women have more control over their sex lives and can turn men down, not because men are becoming more unappealing to women because of porn, it's because men have less access to prostitution. Now, my understanding is that when Craigslist was shut down, which was shut down, by the way, for facilitating trafficking, because you cannot have prostitution without trafficking. They always go hand in hand. The traffickers very quickly move to other sites. A lot of the time, all they do is move to websites that are hosted abroad. Problem solved for them. So John Forums, American John Forums, for example, are illegal. So now they're hosted in Poland or Switzerland or the Netherlands. But she's saying that men are having less access to prostitution. And that's why there is more rape. I mean, I've already made a video responding to this on this channel. You can go and have a look at it. I am probably going to be repeating some things I said there. You know, not even sex work Twitter was happy with this. Because I think what happened here is she says something that a lot of people actually think deep down but they wouldn't phrase it that way she phrased it particularly bad so that basically anyone can read between the lines and see that she's saying we need to sacrifice women in the sex trade to prevent rape which is i think everyone can agree pretty hateful towards those women designating them as rape fodder and like not only is her evidence for this claim flimsy even if it were true it'd be really cruel to say, you know, for the civic population, these men are too dangerous, they're too awful, they're such pressure cookers, they'll just boil over and attack. But the women in the sixth grade, they can handle it. They're fine. They're just born nymphos, so they'll take any man who comes along and it doesn't harm them. So we should just have a big, big trade because there's so many of these women, right? It's got nothing to do with, with poverty or with organized crime. This is not just some abstract thinking, but it's put into practice. Countries like Germany, but not just Germany, you'll find many more where this occurs. When you believe that prostitution is therapeutic to men, that ends in the phenomenon of sending women into prisons to give therapy to sex offenders or sending sex offenders into brothels for the same purpose. And there are cases where this happens. As far as I'm aware, it's not a mass phenomenon, but it shouldn't happen at all. Women in the Sixth Street are not rape fodder. They're not sexual therapy stations. But thinking that they are 
is very much out there and policies that put it into practice exist. And we know that it happened in Canada because one of these scenarios, a woman was murdered. Either it prevents rape and then we can send sex offenders into brothels to be cured or you're just talking horse shit. You can't say it has these powers and it stops rape. But Johns are kind gentlemen and women can pick them very carefully and refuse the rude and awful ones. That doesn't make any sense. She goes on to say, and men who do not have sex suffer. They're less likely to be a part of the labor force and more likely to experience depression, nihilism, and other mental health issues. And thank Christ, a lot of people commented, don't you think maybe the causation there is the inverse? That unemployed men and depressed men have a harder time finding partners? But again, she's saying something that a lot of people think. They think the sex trade is necessary for men's happiness. If brothels and escort agencies and porn disappear, then men will just despair. Now, if you actually listen to a lot of men who come out of brothels or after watching porn, they feel still bad or worse. So not only does it not work for a lot of men, because you don't actually... I mean, we have a loneliness pandemic for men and women. Young people, old people, absolutely. But that's solved by hobbies and friendships, and real relationships. It's not solved by going to a brothel or calling up an escort hotline and saying, I want to have these acts with a woman of this body type for this time duration. That's not human connection. Now the sex trade has hyped itself up, like the profiteers of the sex trade have presented it as some kind of therapy, but it's not, and not even most Johns actually believe that. But even if it did, even if, if prostitution did cure men's depression, the fact that it itself causes abhorrent mental health outcomes in women. Uh, similar outcomes to war veterans and survivors of torture and rape makes it unjustifiable. Like We don't destroy women to help men's mental health, right? So many things men could do. Sports, hobbies, education, friends, real relationships. Not saying these are easy. This is going to take work. Prostitution is pushing a button. You don't progress as a person. You don't develop your character. You don't even grow your sexual prowess and your skills. Because she, she's paid to tell you that you're a great stud. I just want to emphasize this point one more time. Men do not buy sex because they're lonely and depressed. Many of highly successful men, including men who can get plenty of dates, statistics show Johns on average have more partners than non-Johns. They're actually more promiscuous. And this is counting non-prostituted partners. The key difference between a John and a non-John is not loneliness or ability to woo a woman. There are plenty of lonely men who don't buy sex and plenty of very socially connected, successful, charismatic men who do. Johns have told us this so many times. They use the sex trade because it's low effort, zero effort basically, just money. and it's all about you, your sexuality. She's just there to affirm all your fantasies. And at the end, you can just leave. No strings attached. She's not going to want your number, your real name, your house, your babies, whatever. It's no strings attached. You just leave. You don't care. You don't worry about any emotional, physical consequences for her. That's why men buy sex. And also because society lets them and they can and there is socialized into entitlement. That's the difference between Johns and Nons Johns. The feeling that you're owed sex at the push of a button. Like it's just not true that Johns are just a bunch of incels. Even if it was, that wouldn't justify the sex trade, but it's just not true. Next tweet says, the Me Too movement accomplished so much and we have to take the next step. Normalizing having healthy, positive, consensual sex. Decriminalizing sex work, funding sex education, and creating outreach programs to help young people develop healthy sexual habits. Prostitution is not a healthy sexual habit. Not looking for someone who desires you, but someone who needs to pay rent, right? Who needs to make ends meet and is desperate. That's not even a healthy sexual habit. That's predatory. If that was a landlord, we all get it. When the John does it, it's sex work. Come on. How can you learn anything about sex in a paid encounter? It 
the sex trade itself is Me Too on steroids, as the survivor Autumn Burris says. Like, that's what the Me Too movement needs to go. It talks about consent all day long. I've made a video about this before, how prostitution violates basically every tenant of consent. We need a Me Too for the sex trade. We do not need Me Too to promote the sex trade to men. Like, this is upside down land. <laughs> You know, without rape culture, the sex trade would be minimal. I'm not even saying it wouldn't exist, but it'd be so tiny. Because besides poverty, sexual trauma is one of the leading factors that brings women into the industry. Learning that your body doesn't belong to you, but is public goods, essentially. If you've been violated so many times, you think you can't enforce your boundaries, so you might as well charge for the violation. That's one of the key mechanisms that underpins the sex trade. So... How could promoting it possibly this thread is such a mind fuck. But this is the worst one and the one that she got the most flack for, rightfully so, because now she's really saying what the you know sort of the quiet part that we don't say out loud anymore, or not that often in patriarchy, which is we should be moving toward a right to sex. People should be able to have sex when they feel they want to. And we need to develop services that meet people's needs without attaching the baggage of shame or criminalization. Now, for example, the situation in elderly homes where a lot of people don't have enough privacy. Like people do still date in elderly homes or they may have a partner who is in the same home and they want to have some quiet time together. Should you give them the privacy that they can sleep with each other? Duh. There's a difference between enabling someone, let's say in an elderly home or a disabled home or something or some place where you might like privacy, to get that privacy, to have sex with a consenting partner. And something entirely different if now the caretakers are calling an escort for the man with dementia who has been harassing the nurses. Like, there are worlds between these two things. You have a right to not be criminalized for your, your choice of partner, as long as they're adult, you know? Not be criminalized for choosing a same-sex partner, but a right to sex? Thankfully, she is getting crushed in the, in the comments, and a lot of people are saying, if you have a right to sex, that's like saying you have a right to access another person's body. Because otherwise, how could we possibly guarantee it? People always say this, assuming, that, again, there's this army of female nymphomaniacs who just really want to staff the sex trade, and that's why it's fine. It's going to be fine. We'll have enough to meet the demand. And the reality... The women who actually want to offer that, it's a very, very small number. And actual nymphomania is an illness that needs treatment because it ends in self-harm. This fantasy group of women doesn't exist. And if you realize it doesn't exist, then you see that this would be an insul dream come true, right? Supplying men in society with a woman. She says, people should be able to have sex when they feel they want to. This is the pushing of the button mentality that sex should be available at the push of a button no effort no getting to know somebody not meeting someone as a person not giving that person the option to say no if something feels off like eliminating that whole process that is why the demand for prostitution exists because men have the mentality that this is their right and she just affirmed it she just said the quiet part out loud but as many people said it used to be that this was the assumption underpinning marriage. Of course, not people. Like, men should be able to have sex with their wives when they feel they want to. Marital rape as a crime is still incredibly recent, and it's definitely not out of a lot of men's minds. And prostitution is just the other side of the coin to that. It, it really is. I just want to finish by saying, even though I'm, I'm thankful there was a lot of backlash to this tweet because it's disgusting and it's clearly rape culture, I am seeing a lot of tweets recently, even from really high-profile accounts about women aren't having enough children and women aren't having enough sex and can women just adjust and like provide reproductive and, and sexual services to mankind essentially that's what's being said between the lines like what's wrong with women and them being so choosy and not wanting to be mothers and not wanting to sleep with men rather than asking maybe why aren't men making for likable sexual partners or fathers and i'm not even blaming men entirely like the global economy has taken a turn for the worse and has been for a while. A lot of people who want to start families can't do so because of economic reasons. That's not individual men's fault. It's also not men's fault necessarily that they are raised in porn culture, where, I mean, now the ages are, well, like, 9 and 10 when you're first watching gonzo porn. 
at the same time that men are seeing this violent porn and being raised on that kind of sexuality, like we do know it impacts them. We do know that there's more, for example, injuries from anal sex happening and more underage girls reporting extreme sex acts happening at very young ages, the rise in choking, all of these things, like clearly porn is having an impact on sexuality. And no, little boys don't say like, oh, I want to be a pornified man. No, but adult men with some access to education can absolutely take a critical look at the media they're consuming and decide not to consume it anymore and decide not to be that person. And instead, we're always wondering what's up with women. Even though we now actually during COVID had a rise in female poverty and women like being forced to enter the sex trade. On the whole, a lot of women today can say no to sex a lot better than, than their moms or, or their grandmother's generation. And thank Christ for that. I mean, I don't often call women handmaidens, but this hunt woman, this is handmaidenry of the highest order. This is, you know, the pro prostitution position with like the most undiplomatic and dumbest choice of language to promote it. If she would have talked about women's agency and women love to sell sex and, you know, women em emancipate, blah, 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 then she would have gotten a lot more likes. The thing is, even when the sex trade dresses it itself up in the words of women's choice and women's agency, at the end of the day, it still promotes the same mentality, which is men have a right to sex, otherwise they'll wither and die, which is a complete lie. And uh, she just kind of pulled off that veneer and said the quiet part out loud and said the part that's actually underneath all of that. Because, like I said, even sex work Twitter was very unhappy with her. The thing is, they believe that you can create a sex trade where women hold all the power and they can turn men down en masse. Well, that sex trade is going to be very, very, very small. I wish that could happen, but it's, it's completely unrealistic. Because it's staffed by the most vulnerable people on the planet who, from an economic perspective alone, are not in a position, even when it's legal, even in New Zealand and all the countries that you're saying things are so good in, they don't actually have free choice over who to turn down and what practices, etc. Their sexual boundaries are still subject to market forces and they're still competing with people way more vulnerable. And like, this trade is rotten at the core. There is no real justification for the sex trade. Like, the best argument you can make in favor is that currently we're in a situation where a lot of women are economic hostages to this industry. That's why shutting it down is a difficult and delicate process. That's like the only argument that you can make for not shutting it down overnight. The industry itself is indefensible. The mentality is indefensible. The reality, no matter what country or what law, is indefensible. And yeah, I can't wait for me to, to actually be consistent and apply our understanding of the complexities of consent to everybody in every situation. Not just boyfriend and girlfriends, not just frat parties, but very much the brothel and the porn set and then watch the support for the sex trade fall apart. But yeah, I'll, I'll link my video detailing why that is down below and just ask everyone, stop talking about women like we're supply. It's disgusting. Even if it did, which it doesn't, you know, help men's mental health to have access to brothels, uh, it wouldn't be justifiable. Women don't exist to serve as men. We're not sexual therapy stations for men.